So here's question 23 from 13.4 of our Stuart Calculus textbook. So projectiles being fired at an angle of 30 degrees off the horizontal, which means that the vertical component, if this vector here was a unit vector, would be 1 half, and the horizontal component would be root 3 over 2 which means that the direction of our initial velocity for this projectile is going to be root 3 over 2i plus 1 half j. Factor out a half, you get this. Magnitude of that vector is 1. We know that the initial speed, which is the magnitude of the initial velocity, is 500, which means that v of 0 must be 500 times 1 half root 3i plus j. Tells us our initial velocity is 250 times root 3i plus j. Now, we're aiming to find v of t. We're going to start by looking at the only thing we know that's working on our particle, the only force that's working on our particle, which is gravity. We're going to say g is about 9.8 meters per second squared, which means that the acceleration due to gravity is going to be g, negative g, j. If we integrate this, if we integrate this, we end up with the velocity at times t, which is going to be negative g t j. Remember, g is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, but also plus a constant c. We know though that v of 0 is this. So v of 0 is going to be negative g times 0 j plus c1 which is going to equal 250 times root 3 i plus j which tells us that c1 is in fact equal to 250 times root 3 i plus j which gives us the velocity in terms of t, negative g t j plus 250 times root 3 i plus j. We're really looking to get position. To get position, we're going to have to integrate our velocity function. Before we move on, let's just say right now that we are launching our projectile from the origin which means that the position at zero is going to be zero, in this case the zero vector. So r of t, if we integrate again, is going to be negative g over 2t squared j plus 250 times root 3i plus j t plus some c2. Well, let's rearrange a little bit here, and we end up with negative g over 2t squared j plus 250 root 3i plus 250j, and this is times t and times t plus c2. Let's group all our i and j terms together. So we have 250 root 3ti plus 250 minus g over 2 t squared times j and of course there's a missing t term right here which we have to remember so there's actually a t right after the 250 now we need to solve for c2, but we know that r of 0 is 0. So if you plug 0 in for both of these t values, all three of them, you get 0. So we know, therefore, that c2 has to be 0. What this now tells us is that r of t is equal to negative, well, excuse me, we'll use the nice simplified form, 250 root 3 ti plus 250 t minus g over 2 t squared j. The first part of it asks, find the range of the projectile, which is how far along the horizontal axis it has traveled. 
If it's starting at zero, it's going to land when the vertical component, the vertical component right here is zero. So therefore we want to know at what time does 250t minus g over 2t squared equal zero. And if you solve for t in this case, factor it out, you get 250 minus g over 2t equals zero. Well, we know it equals zero when time is zero. So it's also going to be when 250 is equal to g over 2t. So it's when time is equal to 500 over g. So we want to know how far it's gone. How far it's gone is going to be our horizontal components. So our horizontal distance, the range is going to be, so this is the horizontal distance, r i after 500 over g seconds, and that's about 51 seconds, 51.02. We end up with 250 root 3 times time, 500 over g. It's the horizontal distance, and it turns out to be about 22 kilometers. Now, the second part of the question asks the maximum height reached. We know that the pin function, the position function, is a parabola. So it's going to reach its maximum height, reach its maximum height at half the time it takes to get hit the ground again. So it's going to reach its maximum height at at 500 over d times a half, which is 250 over d. To actually find its max height, we need to find how far it's traveled vertically. So we actually just take our vertical component here. There's our vertical component. It's going to be 250. So we're going to our j of 250 over g. And that's going to be 250 times, I'm looking at this again, 250 times 250 over g, that's a g, minus g over 2 t squared, 250 over g squared. g is again 9.8. If you do this out, the maximum height comes out to be about 3.2 kilometers, about 3.2 kilometers. The last thing the question asks is for the velocity, sorry, the speed at impact. So the speed at impact is going to be the magnitude of the velocity, the time of impact. And we know the time of impact is 51. Or you could write it as, you know, it's 500 over g to be exact. So we need to find the velocity at this time right here. We need to find the velocity at time 51. Well, we know, we know that the velocity function, velocity function when we did it out, was equal to this thing right here. There's v of t, so we're going to find v at 500 over t, 500 over g, sorry. So we do 500, so v of 500 over g is going to be negative g times 500 over g j plus 250 plus 250. root 3i plus j. If we clean this up again, you end up with negative 500j plus 250 root 3i plus 250j. So we know that the velocity at 500 over g, which is 51 seconds, is 250 root 3i minus 250j. Now if we want the magnitude of that, we end up with the square root of 250 root 3 squared plus negative 250 squared. So if we keep on doing out the math, we end up with 250 times the square root of 3 plus 1. So it's 250 times 2, which is 500 meters per second. Shouldn't be too much of a surprise to you physics students. So let's recap briefly. We started by writing the direction vector of the velocity. We then found the 
we worked on the speed and we found initially the velocity at zero has a magnitude of 500 and starting with the only force acting upon the this projectile acceleration we integrated to find the velocity function we then solved for the constant we then integrated again right here and then we needed to solve for a second constant we recognized it's a parabola we found the time at impact we found the height plugged in again we found the magnitude of the speed of impact and we found therefore the speed the magnitude of the velocity of the impact so we found the speed of the impact